In this video, we will talk about upgrading our ECC system to S4 HANA. We will talk about the approaches and S4 HANA upgrade steps from a SAP security standpoint. We will also discuss about upgrading roles using the steps in the transaction SC25. Now, the concept of authorizations in S4 HANA is basically the same as it is in uh, ECC. Okay, so what it means is you will still be using the concepts of single roles, detail roles, and the uh, comp composite roles. And from the um, transaction standpoint, uh, you will still use the transactions that you regularly use. So for example, you know, you will still be using uh, transaction SU01 uh, for managing user IDs, EFCG for managing roles. SU25, we'll see, uh, as you will see later, uh, for upgrading the roles. Uh, SU24 for uh, tying up authorization objects to transaction code. So all of the transactions that you are familiar with, uh, you still have those transactions in S4HANA. You'll still be using those. But at the same time, you'll also find many uh, familiar transaction codes, uh, such as XQ01, for example, um, that have been replaced with uh, some other transaction codes. In this case, in our case, you'll see that XQ01 is replaced with the functionality in XQ01 has been merged into transaction BP. Okay, so like how it happens in with every SAP release, uh, you will also find that with every S4 HANA release, you will find the new transaction codes also in the uh, system. And with every S4 HANA release, uh, new transaction codes are introduced uh, in the system. Okay, so you will find that. You will also find that with every S4 HANA release, uh, many transaction codes, programs, function modules, um, they are either, uh, you know, replaced with uh, new uh, programs, transaction codes, function modules, or uh, have been uh, uh, blacklisted, which means you cannot use those transaction codes anymore. Um, some of those blacklisted transaction codes will redirect you to, to some other transaction codes some you cannot use at all. It's, it's, and it's the same with the programs and function modules too, so blacklisted uh, programs and function modules. You cannot use those anymore. So with every S4 HANA release, there are some transaction codes that get blacklisted. Um, so when they blacklist that, uh, you know, the transactions, uh, they are either replaced with the new transaction codes or uh, they are made obsolete or are made the functionality of some of the, them could be made available to you using with uh, via Fury apps, right? And uh, with every S4 HANA release, SAP also uh, releases a document called the simplification list document, which provides the details of the changes that that particular release brings in. So along with the transaction code, apart from the transaction codes, there are, you know, you'll also find new authorizations are introduced uh, in S4HANA. Uh, for example, in, you know, when you check transaction SA38 or SA38, you'll find a new authorization object called S underscore pro NAM. Okay, so this object S underscore pro NAM is used to restrict access to specific programs. So till now, you know, uh, you we would denote secure access to programs or reports using uh, the authorization object S underscore program and using the field of the authorization group in that object, S underscore program, uh, we would then restrict access to the programs or reports within a particular 
authorization group, right? But that was still being wide open. Now, with S4 HANA, you have this new object, right? and this is only an example, okay? Where you know this is kind of you know it's like similar to uh, S underscore tabo underscore nam, right? In S underscore tabo underscore nam you would restrict access to specific tables, right? Instead of using S underscore tabu underscore DIS, uh, which again uses the concept of authorization groups to restrict access to tables. SAP gave you, gave us S underscore tabu underscore nam to restrict access to specific tables. Similarly, you know, you now have S underscore program under uh, program to restrict access to specific programs. So with every release, right, you will have new transaction codes, new authorization objects. You will find uh, functionalities have been merged into uh, some other transaction codes or new you know, functionalities would then redirect you to uh, some other transaction code, a totally new transaction code, okay? So also, like I was just saying, you know, a lot of transaction codes get back blacklisted with SAP S4, you know, S4 HANA, every release, and uh, they, you cannot those, use those transaction codes anymore. And then with every S4 HANA release, you'll also have uh, Fury apps that are introduced for uh, various functionalities. Okay, now, how, as far as the, the objects are concerned, what new objects are, you know, are uh, brought in to the system by the release? You, one of the ways you can check is uh, going through the transaction codes that you're familiar with in uh, SU24. So you can go to SU24 and uh, look at the authorization objects uh, that are associated with that transaction and maybe you can figure out oh, what are the new objects because there are always some new objects that you can that, that don't look familiar to you right so that way you can figure figure out what new objects are introduced for a particular transaction code uh, i just gave an example of a uh, program uh, for programs but uh, you could also have you know if you look at uh, sm36 or sm37 you'll find a couple of new objects in for those transaction codes also. Uh, similarly, if you look at SCC4, for example, uh, you will find that instead of using Tabu DIS, um, now SAP uses Tabu NAM to give access, restrict access to SCC4, right? Um, so you, you can go through SC24 uh, to see what objects are introduced in your familiar uh, transaction codes that you're familiar with, okay? Another way to figure that out would be to look and check the USOBT and USOBX tables, right? So to see what new objects are coming in. Now, from an approach standpoint, you basically have uh, uh, two or uh, three approaches, you know, generally speaking. One is, you know, you can do a straight upgrade uh, you can upgrade your ERP system to S4 HANA system without any changes, without any process changes, or without an adding to any new functionalities into your uh, your environment. Right? It's a straight upgrade. Right? That you're familiar with. Uh, you can take a brownfield approach. Of, you know, um, that's the, another way of. Uh, that's also the second approach that you can take. Uh, if you want to transform your SAP uh, landscape to implement cloud applications without disturbing your current setup, right? But at the same time, you, know, you want to do some some amount of some level of uh, optimization to your security model, your roles, uh, you can take the brownfield approach, right? So where you do some optimization to your uh, current security model. And the third approach is, you know, if you want to implement S4 HANA as a new implementation, uh, that would be a greenfield approach, right? So if you want to implement S4 HANA as a new implementation, um, 
which means that you know you will implement this Purana as a new environment altogether. And uh, while using your uh, current ECC environment parallelly, uh, what it means is you know you don't uh, want to disturb your business. Uh, you know, so you want to have uh, the, your business running in your current TCC setup, but you will have another environment where Espohana will be implemented as a new implementation, which gives you the flexibility. Uh, of uh, redesigning your roles, kind of, right? So if you want to redesign your uh, roles and uh, the business process are changing because of this for HANA, um, you can uh, take the, uh, the Greenfield approach. So we'll let us talk about, you know, we'll talk about these three approaches and the next slides. So. If you want to, if you're going for a straight upgrade, right, which means you are not implementing any new functionalities, you are not introducing any new uh, applications like QD or HANA database into your uh, set you know, environment, you can go in for a straight upgrade, right? Same, which means you, after the basis is technically, um, has technically upgraded the system, uh, you can go and upgrade your roles. Um, using the transaction SF25, okay? And uh, once that is done, and if you want, if you are doing a Greenfield approach parallelly, for example, you can download the roles uh, from your upgraded system and move it to um, your Greenfield as for HANA system, okay? Uh, but if you want to implement Fury, right, and without uh, or if you are implementing, if you want to, if you decide to implement HANA database, then your roles and security model for those systems would need to be built around what you currently have. Okay, so that is something we need to keep in mind. But when you do a straight upgrade, it is us. You don't have to do anything. There is no optimization that is needed. Um, you know, you just go through the SU25 steps to upgrade your roles. When it comes to brownfield uh, approach, uh, we just discussed about it, is that if you, that in a brownfield approach, you take what you have, uh, have uh, from a process wise, and uh, put that onto a new uh, technological uh, platform. And then you do uh, the process of optimization stuff, right? So basis applies, you know, does the upgrade. And then from a security standpoint, you would still uh, go through the SU25 steps, but at the same time, you know, you, you would say, uh, when you take a look at the roles, right? If you find in any of the roles that you have, the objects in the scheme change status, uh, which means in the past, if you have uh, changed the authorization values, standard authorization values in the roles without going through SU24 changes, and uh, the default values are changed, you know that you know the object status changes to change, right? Uh, you would also find that many times, you know, we and each one of us have ended up inserting objects into the authorization objects into the roles manually. So in a brownfield approach, one of the optimizations that you could do is you know you can eliminate um, this manually inserted objects and uh, the change status as objects uh, by adjusting those authorizations, those objects, tying up those of objects to the transaction codes in SU24. Okay, so that is uh, optimization step that you can take uh, for the roles. Another scenario that you could do an optimization is, you know, if you find that in your role, um, you have, and this is true for, you know, systems that are, you know, very old, right? You know, 20, 25 years old, that you will find that, you know, your roles would have S underscore E code authorization object inserted into the roles manually. 
because in the past we said we used to uh, allow you to do that right you know you could go and insert s underscore t code into the roles manually uh, i haven't tried it in many years so i think really don't know right now uh, whether it allows you uh, now or not maybe i should try that uh, so one of uh, you know optimizations that you can do in this scenario is to remove the inconsistencies in, in between the role the the entries that you have in the menu tab of the role and the SN manually inserted s underscore t code authorization object so you take the values from s underscore t code object and add them into the menu tab in the role so that is another method uh, optimization that you could do and you can also you know if you feel the transaction codes that are not being used um, you know by the users you could remove those transaction codes and you can add new ones if you want to if you you know if you think some new transaction codes could be used and security has kind of few of those uh, that you could uh, think of adding uh, to to the rules right so you can do these kinds of optimization when you so when you do these kinds of optimization in your roles so that becomes a brownfield uh, um, approach right but again you know if you're deciding to uh, implement fury roles fury security or in you know, a hana and sorry you know, sap hana security database security you could still you would still need to build uh, uh, those two role, roles for those separately. Okay, so you'll still need to design and build the QD roles and SAP HANA authorizations. And uh, in the greenfield approach, right, then I, this is a you know classic way to basically start with a blank sheet of paper, so to speak, right? Uh, with a fresh mind, you know, and you know, you can design all the processes that are needed as per your S4 HANA uh, uh, aspirations, right? So if your process is changing, you know, because of S4 HANA, then, you know, you, it is a good idea to, you know, change. You know, even re, you know, design your redesign your security, right? So, in a way, you know, you ask yourself, you know, what do I need, and uh, how how do I want to work, and design all necessary elements to achieve uh, that particular goal. So, in other words, you know, you start with the process definition first in a greenfield approach and then do the technical stuff so in in this case you are essentially uh, going for security redesign and build roles that conceptually meet your fury and hana uh, sap hana database uh, requirement and strategy and like i mentioned earlier this one you know, with a greenfield approach, you will parallelly run your ECC uh, system and uh, implement S4 HANA and then security new security model parallelly. Now. Slide. Okay. Now let's get into what do we know, what do we need to do from a pre-update standpoint um, in ECC environment, okay? So before you start working with, uh, you know, uh, or before the upgrade is you know, started, even the technical upgrade of BIOS base system is started, um, and before you start doing SU25 steps uh, to the tech, to do the technical upgrade of the role, I would suggest that you back up, uh, you know, take a backup of uh, the roles, either by you know creating a transport or and releasing it, 
or download the, uh, the roles or have a copy of the roles in another system. Okay. Why would you need to do that? It is just in case to, you know, to refer to any pre-upgrade and original authorizations in case of any uh, issues, you know, and later on. So you can, alternatively, you can also, you know, download the data uh, from the security tables like AGR 1250, 1251, AGR underscore uh, T codes. And AGR underscore T code is going to be very useful. You know, we'll see how. Okay. Um, agent to go user, for example, right? So just to make sure uh, that later on users don't come and say to you and uh, that they had for particular access, now, now they have lost it and all of that. So it is a good idea to download these tables and use of BTN, use of BX, uh, the customer tables, the use of BT underscore C and use of BX underscore C are also very important because that these tables will later on help you after your system is upgraded to S4 HANA to compare uh, the authorizations, right? For uh, uh, compare the you know, data uh, for transaction codes and authorization objects. So you, you know, it's a good idea. Uh, I would suggest that you download the data from these tables also. Now, like I was saying, right, with every SAP S4 HANA release, SAP also releases something called as a simplification list document. Okay, so it's a good, good practice. It's a good idea to download uh, the that particular release specific document and go through that document with your business process owners and subject matter experts because the simplification list document contains or gives the details of all the changes uh, that are coming in with that particular release. Okay, so it's a good, good idea to you know go through that document to get an understanding of uh, the changes that are coming in and, and to see how it's going to impact your security, your environment, your uh, business processes and all. So you go through that document. You can actually Google this document, right? You know, you go to, go to Google and say simplification list, as for HANA release 1909, 1809 or whatever, and it will give you that. So, you know, you, you'll find a link for the document there. Another good idea to, you know, use is to download uh, the STP0N data uh, from your ECC system. Because if you plan to implement Fury, okay, um, you, there is a report in the Fury library, okay? Uh, when you go to SAP Fury library, there is a report. Uh, when you use that, you will you know that report actually using some parameters that you provide one of which is the the transaction codes list uh, it will recommend the the report will give you recommendations about uh, the fury apps that are applicable to your environment so downloading is 03 n data is very useful in my opinion so i think you should do that also if you are upgrading you don't need to do this, you know, if you're not, you're not planning to implement Fury, but if you do, then I would say, you know, you download, take, get the ST03 in data for Fury apps recommendations, okay? Now, like I was just mentioning, you know, you, you can run this report, uh, the Fury apps library report to get recommendations based on your system usage in the Fury apps library. Once the technical upgrade of S4 HANA is done, right? So in the previous slide, we took the data, uh, downloaded the data from the tables from the ECC system. And now after the system has upgraded, you know, has been upgraded to S4 HANA by the basis team. Now let us discuss about some of the things that you could, how those downloaded data, especially uh, AGR underscore T code, and AGR underscore uh, defined 
for example, how they could be useful in S4 HANA uh, before you actually start anything, you know, in H25, right? So some of these steps that you're looking, you know, in the slide, like for example, PRGN underscore CORR2, uh, this is a table where, you know, when you take the date transaction code data uh, from AGR underscore T codes that you have downloaded, you know, this particular table will give you out of the transaction codes from your roles, which of those transaction codes have been replaced with uh, new transaction codes in S4 HANA, right? So for example, your roles have XQ01. Um, when you come to this table, PRGN underscore CORR2, it will tell you that XQ01 has been replaced with uh, transaction BP. XQ02 has been replaced with transaction BP. So you get that list, you know, the old transaction codes against uh, new trans new transaction codes, the, you know, the new ones, the replacing ones. Similarly, if you look at the, if you execute the program, PRO FGEN underscore PORR underscore report underscore two, it will, and here it will, it has an input, it will, you can put in your roles that you can get from HR, HR underscore define or HR underscore 1251, right? So this will give you uh, the list of transaction codes, uh, the impacted roles of the you know, uh, transaction codes, right? So what all transaction codes in the roles are getting going to get replaced or have become obsolete or have become, uh, you know, or, or have been locked or are, have been blacklisted, right? So you get that list. And which is, you know, this report is basically your step 2D in transaction SU25. So you can do these two steps. And the third one you could, like I was you know, talking about earlier was uh, using the simplification list document. Okay. So using these three and the fourth one is also ABLM blacklist. So, so in this table, ABLM underscore blacklist table, uh, you will find, you can take the transaction codes from let's say, um, your ager underscore t code that you downloaded and uh, you know put you know take those transactions and put it in the selection screen of this table ablm underscore blacklist you will get a list of transaction codes that have been blacklisted which means you cannot use those transaction codes anymore right so these four things you know the four data from these four steps that you get you can download those data provide them to your business process owners and uh, uh, subject matter experts and have some brainstorming sessions as to, to, uh, to you know, to decide on how to uh, handle these changes. Because that, that these are going to impact your security, right? So it, these are going to impact your end users, your business processes. So, even before you start any upgrades, right, uh, doing anything in the system, after the system is technically upgraded by the basis team, it, it's a good practice, it's a good idea to, you know, talk to the business you know, process owners on the impact of, you know, the data that you see from these four steps. And for the, you know, you can refer to this table, you know, this OSS notes, 2270335 and 2190137 uh, as far as this blacklist, uh, how to handle this blacklist uh, transactions are concerned. So if I were you, you know, if I were upgrading the system and if I want to do it in a very planned manner, uh, I would suggest and I would personally do these four steps and you know, discuss with the functional experts, functional team to understand what, you know, to get to let them know what the kind of impact uh, this upgrade, these changes are going to have on their business processes and end users. Now, SAP authorization concept, uh, we know uses the authorization objects, right, which allows access to 
certain kind of uh, business or you know data and data right uh, for example locations and uh, plans and company codes and the authorization object fields then define you know which of these business objects a user may access based on their uh, object values okay and we know that you know these authorization objects are maintained within a role in pfcg right now let us try to understand what we need to do due to system uh, upgrade right how do we handle those so after the upgrade you will find that you know in many cases uh, the authorization objects have been uh, replaced or the or have been you know made obsolete or have, or have become obsolete or in our uh, new authorization objects have been introduced and it happens with every um, you know sap upgrade so there are cases where you know when uh, no authorization object fields are available for a particular activity okay so for example you know you will uh, find that in some cases you know when, let's say the activity create is not available to you anymore or change is not available to you but you know it also uh, instead in some case you know you'll find that authorization check uh, is, is checked via another authorization object right whenever these changes happen your sap always gives you uh, something to replace that so so in that case you know you will also have to maintain that other object that you see okay so technically right uh, speaking these uh, fields may have uh, you know empty uh, values okay uh, which is checked in some other authorization check now like we are saying we are talking about you know transaction codes may become maybe uh, obsolete and uh, may have been replaced like we were saying right you know for example uh, as you can see here in the screen uh, image uh, that transactions uh, or account payable and uh, account receivable master data right fk01 and fd01 uh, are replaced in s for hana uh, by transaction bp okay and uh, you can find this information in prgn underscore cor or two table also okay so in this simplification list document that i was talking about will give you uh, that information so let us now okay for now let's check the simplification list document so this is a simplification list document uh, before we proceed further uh, let's go and check uh, the xk01 right so we are saying that you know that excuse fk01 and fd01 have been replaced with bp so in the simplification list document which you can download by searching in google let us go and find fk01 okay fk01 and uh, And if you see here, when what you see here is transaction get the, get the redirected to transaction BP. So when you execute in S4 HANA, when you execute any of these transaction codes, right, that you see here, they, what it means is they will be redirected to transaction BP, which means the functionality of these transaction codes, including XK01 and XK02, VD01, VD02. The functionality of those transaction codes have been merged into transaction BP. Similarly, if you see FD06, uh, FK06, these are the transaction codes 
that have become obsolete. Okay, so this simplification list document will give you a lot of information about the changes that are coming in with a particular release. You will have the OSS note numbers. You know, you you know, you can have your business process experts, um, owners go through these OSS notes, go through the document to see any of these functionality has been implemented, which is part of your process, and how it is going to impact your environment. So, yeah, from a technical standpoint, let's check something up, right? So, for example, it says dual stack is not supported anymore, right? So we will give you the details about that. Okay. And instances without ICM is not supported. Base system would need to go through this document, this OSS note, for example. Okay. Pool tables. Support for two pool table has ended. Plus tables and all. And as for HANA. So you, you see here, right? There's so much of, you know, uh, information this document provides you to make your decisions. Okay. So it's a good idea to go through this document prior to, you know, uh, even the upgrade uh, project starts, right? Going through this document will help you prepare better for your uh, upgrade. Now let us go through uh, the overall uh, high level uh, view of the steps to upgrade authorizations. Okay, so the first step that you have is to transfer new SAP data on authorization definitions from applications using the transaction SC25. Okay, and you can refer to the OSS note, um, SAP note 440231, which you know this has um, some important information about how to use SC25. SAP, we know SAP de delivers. Uh, standard authorization objects in tables use of BX and use of BT. Okay, and these are maintained via the transaction SU22. So SU25 has a couple of mandatory steps uh, that you have to execute, and uh, those are related to SU24 table entries. Okay, and uh, one thing you need to keep in mind that you know the step number one is 25 right uh, that is you know uh, that is used to transfer uh, the tables the values from us of bx and us of bt to uh, the customer tables right use of bx underscore c and use of bt underscore c that particular step step one in su25 is to initially fill the customer tables, right? The underscore C tables. So what I was trying, trying to say is that you need to keep in mind that this step, the step one is used only during new system installation. And if you if you have made any changes in ECC in SA24, then if you execute this step one, it will overwrite all your changes. So you should uh, ignore this particular step when you're upgrading. You know, don't execute this step in SO25 in S4 HANA. Okay. Now the next step for and like I was saying is to for transferring new data to review the SO24 table entries and adapt those uh, new SAP proposals, right? That is, with this we are talking about step 2B of SU25, right? So if you have SU24 table entries with uh, customer values, 
in your ACC environment, you would need to review those entries and then decide how to uh, handle them. Okay. So the first two steps is to, in SU25, is to make adjustments in tables uh, so that the system will provide the correct proposals in PFCG. Okay. You will also have to check appropriate uh, release uh, specific documentations, such as the simplification doc list document that we just saw, um, the upgrade guide, uh, the OS, you know, OSS notes. Uh, maybe from, you know, you can search or maybe you can get it from the, you know, the upgrade guide or the simplification list document. You, you know, you should review all those documents. Um, Maybe if you're running that Fury report that we were talking earlier about earlier, you can also you know refer to the Fury library for information about those uh, apps. Okay. Now because you know there are uh, transaction codes that you would find and you know, not have been replaced or have become obsolete or have been blacklisted. Uh, you, you know, you may have to rebuild your roles also to meet your uh, uh, new business needs. Okay. Now, if you don't adjust these roles, if you don't upgrade these roles, uh, right, uh, it is very likely that user, users uh, cannot execute, will not be able to execute uh, tasks uh, after the upgrade and uh, they cannot access new transaction codes or data okay that is in case if you are not upgrading your roles now uh, this may happen uh, meaning they cannot execute uh, that new transaction codes or you know execute the tasks uh, that may happen due to the fact that you know new authorization checks are not uh, are implemented in the applications and the user has not been authorized uh, for new authorization objects, okay? And uh, sometimes when users execute uh, something and the roles are not up to date, uh, the users may get system dumps because uh, of use of obsolete transaction codes. So it is essential that you upgrade and rebuild your roles. Um, as part of your upgrade process, you should not ignore that. Okay, so you have to go through the SU25 steps. Now, let us talk about the sequence of uh, uh, steps in SU25. Uh, so, to in, you know, in order to prepare your system to perform the upgrade for you to do the upgrade in the security roles upgrade right how do you prepare your system to do that now what you see here is a a very high level sequence of steps in your uh, before the upgrade right and the purpose of this steps is to have a well set uh, su24 tables in your uh, environment and uh, as well as a set you know, PACG uh, for uh, role maintenance, okay? So one of the, the first step that you need to do is to repair uh, any inconsistent data using SU24 underscore auto underscore report repair program, okay? Now, this, program, right? You can find the details about it in the SAP note 1539556. Okay, you can go through that to, uh, SAP note for more details on this report. Okay, so this is the first step that you know you need to do and that you know you execute this report uh, report to repair the inconsistencies in your SU24 uh, data. Okay, uh, we will talk about this in more details in the next slide. But after you do that, you know, you also have to 
as execute this report test your 25 underscore initialize underscore tst mp okay so this is to initialize the timestamp logic for su25 okay what it does is it uh, fills the corresponding entries in the timestamp tables okay and this program does not contain a selection screen and can be executed in a dialog mode and you can also execute it in you know, background mode if you want to but okay and if the sap node 1599128 uh, will give you more information on this this particular report okay now you need to keep in mind that you know the table associated with this one uso bx underscore tst mp okay uso bx underscore tst mp that table uh, if it contains more than 100 entries okay uh, you must not run this report so why because uh, that would result in uh, more workload uh, while running the su25s uh, step 2c so if you have more than 100 entries in this table don't run this report in uh, uh, uso bx you know uso bx underscore tst mp table okay now uh, after that you know you can create uh, a tra you know a transport in step 3 of su25 for your su24 data and then export it and uh, for adjusting the roles you can you know adjust the roles in the export mode in pfcg okay why because in export mode because you want to get the new data from su24 into your role so you want to keep you know the, your old data but also at the same time bringing the new uh, data after the upgrade so you make you change you, you know upgrade update your roles in the export mode okay and after your roles are changed uh, you are adapted you know, your roles to new uh, changes uh, you can create a, a transport okay and export it. So once you have done with this uh, preparations in your uh, system, you are now will be ready to um, run the steps in SU25. Okay, so let's go and check some of these options, uh, the uh, high level steps that we talked about in little detail now. So first, you let's talk about the report is u24 underscore auto underscore repair okay now the first thing that you need to ensure is that you have the latest version of this program okay so you can go refer to sap note 2505291 okay so for the latest version of the report you can download it and uh, apply it okay and then you run this report as 24 underscore auto underscore repair and to check and if required you know to correct authorization default values for transactions with regard to the start authorizations and to repair any inconsistencies in SU24. Okay. SAP recommends that you run this report with all options selected. So this report automatically you know, detects and repairs inconsistencies, inconsistencies uh, that have a ne negative influence to the uh, in the PFCG transaction or the you know upgrade the post processing steps that is in SU25. Okay, so if you use the report as part of your upgrade post processing and that is you know if you forget to execute this report in the beginning uh, before starting su25 steps then you should at least start and use this run this program before you start executing 
step two C in SO twenty five. Okay. Now the options of uh, how you know the details about these options are explained in, you know as form of in form of FAQs in this note one five three nine five five six. Okay. So this note has frequently asked questions of uh, for administration of authorization default values. So if you see here, for transaction FZ10, check indicator for S underscore object program is set to proposal to yes, and then the object has been inserted into NHL24 default values. Okay, if all the objects have been added. So these are the you know, inconsistencies that's of this report you know corrects. So it's a you need to run this report before you pass the FU25 step. Now for upgrading the roles, right? Or for updating the roles with new authorizations. Like we just mentioned, you should use the option in PFCG, read old status and merge with new data. Okay, so what you do is you know you go to PFCG, you're going to change mode, then you go to authorization tab, and then select this export mode of for profile generation, and then you choose read old status and merge with new data. Okay, so this will start the merge function and update existing authorizations according um, according you know for, as per and listed in the steps you know in this OSS note 113290 okay this contains the merge process uh, in, of PAC, PFCG merge process for authorizations data maintenance okay so when you go into the role, right, you'll also find the new the you know, object statuses as new or updated. Okay. So so the system upgrade, okay, brings in new objects, new authorizations and all. So I would suggest that you know you once you see this, any objects that are in new status. I would recommend that you have discussions with your business process owners or subject matter experts and decide how to handle the new and unmaintained authorizations that the upgrade would bring into the roles. Okay, so without uh, talking to people, do not make any assumptions. It's a good idea to talk to see you know what the old authorizations were. Um, and if it is okay to you know accept or include the new recommended default values and all, so it's a good idea to have a thorough discussion with your business teams. So the you know the system upgrade right, like I'm saying, will be will bring in new authorizations which may be maintained with authorizations by default or may have may be required. To, you know you to maintain them right so you need to decide and uh, come to an consensus whether to accept them or deactivate them and uh, based on that then fix any authorization issues during testing okay so and this is where you know the backup copies of the roles will come in handy to compare the original and upgraded authorizations and help you and the business subject matter experts to adjust the authorizations in the role. So like I was saying earlier in the beginning, it's always a good idea, good practice to download the data from ECC. So this is where, these are the reasons why, you know, uh, they will be useful and helpful. To comparison, you know, to compare what was originally there with uh, what what happens, you know, with that upgrade. 
Now here, uh, let us now review uh, at a high level uh, uh, the post upgrade, technical or post upgrade activities in S4 HANA system. That is, uh, let us see what we need to do in S25. Okay. Now, ideally, you know, these steps should be performed first in a test uh, sandbox, you know, box, right, you know, like a sandbox system. Okay, so that, you know, you get an idea uh, as to what you're getting into with that upgrade. What kind of issues uh, you may have, what kind of changes are coming in. Just to get an idea, you it's a recommended thing that you perform the upgrade in a sandbox system first. Uh, that also will give the you know business owners to see what kind of functionalities they like and you know they want to uh, adapt or don't like, right? So it's a good idea to do that in a sandbox. Okay, but once you decide to upgrade, you know you have to those uh, repeat those steps in the SU twenty five steps in uh, development system also. Okay, and once you do that, you know, you do the changes in development and then you transport them to the other systems in the landscape. Okay, so as part of uh, the preparation to the upgrade, uh, to upgrade the roles, you have to review and apply all the applic applicable notes listed in this uh, OSS note 440231. Okay, so refer to this OSS note. Uh, before you do anything in SA25. And after that, you know, you can uh, proceed with the steps under post-process settings after upgrade to higher release section. Okay. In SA25. Now, um, step 2A and 2B, okay, in SA25. What do they do? Step 2A, compare the proposal values of the role, I mean, the, for the role maintenance from, a, from the previous release, right? That is your uh, ECC release with the data from the current release, that is your S4 HANA. And the new default values, right, are written in the customer tables for role maintenance. What 2B does, is that it compares the changes to the SAP defaults in SU24 with the new SAP defaults. Okay, so if uh, decide, you know, you can make an adjustment by accepting the SAP proposals for new authorization objects and values for the effective transaction codes. So step, step 2B, uh, in other words, what it does is, uh, they will give you a list of transaction codes that are impacted, right? The transaction codes in your rows that are impacted uh, due to this SU24 changes, okay? The new defaults that, that are coming in. And uh, it will give you an option whether to accept those new changes or not. Okay, that is what uh, step 2B does for you. And these two steps are mandatory. 2A and 2B are mandatory. You need to do this. Okay, after you're done with step two B and two C, you know, you then execute uh, step two D and uh, step two C, two C. So you have to go through these steps, two D and two C. In step two B, okay, you will be updating the rows for transactions uh, in the menu tab of the rows. And in step 2C, you can review and adjust the authorization based on the changes that are coming in, okay, um, through step 2D. Okay, so, so step 2D, uh, keep in mind, is only the changes in the menu tab of the role, okay? And once you accept the new transaction codes and delete the obsolete ones or the blacklisted ones, Naturally, the authorization objects will get impacted. So you make those uh, 
you know, changes or adapt those changes in step 2C in export mode. Okay, so step 2C, you can, you know, review the uh, and uh, adjust the operation. And if everything is done, after everything is done, you will create a final transport in step 2, you know, step 3 of SU25. That is, you know, the tape changes coming in from 2A and 2B. You can make those changes or you can capture those changes in step 3 to, you know, create a transport. Uh, okay, for this new proposals, new changes that you're going to adapt. Okay, you can then uh, transport this for new proposals to your landscape. And after you have made the changes in 2D and 2C, and you can create a transport for the roles in PFCG and uh, transport those upgraded uh, roles as well. Now let's take a look at the you know, briefly uh, the steps of you know from SG25 to A to B to B and to C. Okay, let's talk about those steps briefly here. So first, we let's talk about um, the step 2A. Okay, so for an upgrade, right, we start the SU25 activities by running step 2A. Okay? So what step 8, 2A does is uh, this compares the data in USOBT and USOBX tables with the customer tables, right? So it compares the data from US of BT with the data in US of BT underscore C table and the data from US of BX with the data in US of BX C underscore C table, okay? So if SAP determines that there is no conflict between the SAP proposed values with the values maintained by the customer, it goes ahead and copies the data to the customer tables, okay? And for the transactions, where it determines that, you know, SAP proposed values conflict with the customer values, it proposes that we compare and manually adjust the values in step 2B. So 2A just does a comparison between US of BT and US of BT underscore C tables and US of BX, um, you know, data from US of BX, it compares with US of BX underscore C tables. It just simply does the comparison. Okay, the step 2A of SU25. And after that is done, the comparison done, step 2B actually, you know, uh, lets you decide whether to accept the changes on proposals or not, right? So after we run, uh, after 2A, right, step 2A, we run step 2B and uh, manually compare the list of transactions uh, where the list of SAP proposed check indicator and default values is different, okay? Uh, from the values maintained by the customer by us, basically, okay? So we go through all these affected transactions one by one, okay? And either accept SAP proposals, um, you know, SAP proposed values, or keep the values maintained by us, maintained by the customer, okay? And the SAP does not force you to accept them. So in most cases, Right, we would keep the customer values unless there is an overwhelming need uh, to change it to the proposed values. Okay, so the most important case would be to look up uh, for cases where SAP is proposing more security than what we have in the system. Okay, for example, SAP proposal is for check, whereas uh, customer proposal is for do not check. Right, this one. So, 
once we are through with this you know, entire list of affected transaction codes, we are ready to go to uh, step 2C, okay? uh, to look at the roles affected by the changes coming in from SU24 uh, transaction, okay? from step 2B. So at this point, you know, I, I know I would advise that you take a backup of use of BT underscore CT and use of BX underscore C change log save tables so that we have an idea of the values changed as part of this uh, SU25 activity. Okay, so in step 2B, like uh, we were talking about, it will you will see the proposed changes to authorization objects in an associated with a transaction code. Okay, so you need to be very careful about what you are accepting or you know rejecting because this is going to sometimes it will give you less authorizations. Uh, it will give you more author. Sometimes it will give you way more authorization that you are you know that you you are ready to accept. So it is very essential that you go through this uh, list very carefully, the step to B step, because this is, this is directly going to impact the roles that you're going to change in step to C. After that, uh, you're, you know, if you have run this step to A, step to B, which are mandatory steps, you can then go and decide to make changes to your roles. Okay, so when you, if you go to step 2D, okay, which is mainly meant uh, to check if SAP has introduced uh, new transactions in place of any existing transactions. Okay, so you know, when you execute this report, uh, this step 2D, it generates the list of roles uh, that shows old transaction that are replaced by new transaction. For example, in this screenshot, if you look, FS01 is getting replaced with FS00, right? MB1A is rep getting replaced with MI MIGO. XD01 is getting replaced with um, BP. In case of, you know, the FS01, you know, it's an old entry and will be deleted, okay? So you will have to make that change. FS01 will not work. So, you know, your SAP is saying, the step 2D is saying that you have to replace FS01 with FS00, XD01 with BP, MB0, MB18 with MIGO. Okay, now, just because SAP is recommending, you know, that the transaction, old transaction codes are getting replaced with some new transactions, now you cannot make the change, you know, without discussing it first with your business process experts. Okay, so my recommendation to you is, you download this report, you know, it, it gives you the options to download this report and give this report to your subject matter experts or business process owners and, uh, you know, talk to them and tell them that, you know, these are the changes that are going to happen in the roles, whether they, are, they want to accept them or not. In most cases, they don't have a choice, right? So for example, in s hana if you exclude XT01, it will directing direct. It will take you to BP, whether you remove it from the role or not. Remove XD01 from the role or not. It will take you to BP. Now, if you see here, there are three columns here, right? It does not exist, blocked, and obsolete. So, if you have any, you know, a check mark under does not exist, which means that transaction code has been removed from the system permanently. Okay, it doesn't exist anymore in your system. So you don't have a choice. You'll have to replace it or delete it from the role, that particular transaction. 
uh, you will find you know some transaction and you know check mark under locked column right for some transactions which means they have been locked and they cannot be used okay so you might want to check how that can be unlocked or if they can be locked at all or not and that is where you know this your blacklist ABLM underscore blacklist table is going to come in handy. You will know. Obsolete, you know, they, you, you know, the functionality has been merged with some other transaction codes. That's basically what it means, right? So, for example, XD01, the functionality of XD01 is now part of the transaction BP. So, download this report, okay? and discuss with the business uh, subject matter experts on the impact of these changes to the business processes and to decide on how to handle the old and new uh, transaction codes as well as the authorizations. Uh, the reason you need to discuss is because I have seen people, uh, end users, getting riled up because they lost access to transaction codes or authorizations that they are uh, used to. So it's a good idea to discuss this less uh, with the business process owners first, okay, before you go and adjust the menu, automatically adjust the menu to replace these transactions. Okay, so keep this in mind. It's very important that you discuss this list with your functional people. Now, after you have made the changes in SU step 2D, right, by changing the, uh, updating the rules with the new transaction codes or removing the transaction codes in case of their, they don't exist anymore, you can then go to step 2C. Okay, so here you have to choose uh, the export mode like we discussed earlier, to update the rules. Okay, so step 2C generates a list of rules affected by the SU24 data changes uh, with step 2B activity. Okay, and here it gives you, when you click on the merge button, it gives you uh, a simulated uh, report of the authorization changes for each role uh, before you actually make the changes in the role. So again, this report is also something that you can download and discuss with your uh, business process owners to see which of those you would want to uh, adapt the authorizations, right? So as you know, like I was saying, I mean, so you like you did with the, do with step two D. Now you download this and discuss the changes with your uh, business process owner. Now, if you don't want to use steps to see, you can make the same, you know, changes in EFCG directly using the export mode also. Now, each of these roles, right, that you see in step to see must be processed so that the profile of the roles can be adjusted to as for HANA changes, okay. Now, some of the backend rules may not be needed and may be deleted if you want. And uh, if you want to refer to the OSS node 113290 for you know, the merge process of authorization data uh, maintenance, you know, you can do that. And finally, after you're done with all the changes, you create a transport for the SU24 changes um, in step three in SU25. Okay, this is the, um, uh, uh, this last step is a mandatory step in SU25 process uh, to transport the customer tables. Okay. And uh, after this is done, you, once you create the transport, uh, you can also create a uh, transport for the roles in PFCG, okay, that you changed in step 2C. So all those roles, you captured that 
uh, in a transfer and move them to your next system. So after this, you know, at, at the end of your upgrade, SU25 steps in a development environment, you basically will have two transports, one for the customer table, the SU24 changes, and the second transport will be for uh, the roles. Okay. Okay, now to wrap up what we have discussed so far, you know, as part of the upgrade, uh, you decide first. Once you know that, you know, your systems are, you need to do and upgrade your systems. It's a good idea to make your preparations, you know, prepare, you know, well in advance, right? So you decide on the migration approach that you're going to take, upgrade approach you're going to take, whether you want to go for a state upgrade, you want to do some optimization, or you want to have a new implementation, like a greenfield implementation type of a scenario, right? You decide on that. I mean, not you as a security person, but the project management and the customer has to decide that, basically. Customer also has to define the scope of the upgrade, right? Whether it's they want to do as as is upgrade, they want to implement Fury and HANA, SAP HANA database security, you know, or, you know, you know, as part of their uh, up, up migration to S4 HANA, it's another decision that customers will have to make. Now, after it is decided you're going to upgrade, um, like I was, we were discussing earlier, you back up, take a backup of all the security related data. Okay, the tables, the roles, uh, the S224 changes, use of BT tables, AGR underscore T quote, you know, data, AGR underscore role state, you know, data, um, all those, right? You take a backup of your security data from your system. Now, we saw uh, the different ways of uh, figuring out what, how, what these changes are going in, what changes are going to come in, right? Um, you can, uh, go through the simplification list in your document, right? After the system is upgraded, uh, in a, you know, you can check the tables, PRGN and PRGN and this code core two, uh, or the blacklist, you know, ABLM blacklist table, or the simplification list, simplification list document to, you know, understand how your roles are going to get impacted, right, with a new transaction code, which are, which transaction codes have become obsolete or blacklisted. So you, you know, get, take that data uh, from your downloaded uh, tables and uh, discuss with your business process owners about this, the, about the impacts of these changes coming in, right? Then before you start upgrading, you start up using SU25, uh, it's a good idea to run this, the program SU24 underscore auto underscore repair uh, to repair any inconsistencies in your SU24 uh, data, right? Um, then, you know, you perform your security upgrade going through the steps uh, to A, to B, to D, and to C of transaction SU25. Now, you need to review the output very carefully from step two B and two D with the business teams, okay? To, to whether to, and decide whether to accept the new transaction codes or continue with old transaction codes uh, with old authorizations. And uh, you also have to follow the best practice uh, for adjusting authorizations in uh, authorization objects uh, in step two C, okay? And after you have made all your changes, um, finally, you know, you create uh, a transport with step three of SU25 for the SU24 changes, the customer tables. And then you also create a role, you know, transport for the roles in PFCG for all the roles that are uh, changed uh, as part of your uh, security technical upgrade uh, process, okay? So these are the things that you need to keep in mind um, and remember for upgrading your ECC system to uh, S4HANA system.
my strong suggestion in the end is that every single report that you see that we have discussed whether it is prgn underscore cur or table or step 2b uh, changes or step 2d changes uh, the data coming out of ablm underscore blacklist you discuss all these changes with your business process owners or subject matter experts before you make any changes technically in the system okay because if you assume certain things and you know you simply you know adjust the roles you know it is likely that you know you can create problems for yourself because users will invariably come and complain that you know you have lost they have lost access to some things and you don't want to uh, get into that situation uh, one thing i did not uh, cover in the slides and i forgot to cover in the slide and mention is testing is also very important okay because as far as hana is going to bring in a lot of changes that is going to impact uh, customers uh, business processes and uh, all it is a good idea a good practice to ensure that the roles are thoroughly tested okay so you focus on you know uat mainly the user acceptance testing focus on that so that and it all depends again right on the time frame that you have okay uh, for the upgrade so within your uh, given time frame you try to fix fit in your testing also you know all this pre upgrade checks that you want to do post upgrade uh, technical upgrade basis upgrade steps that you want to do and uh, the sh25 steps that you want to do and testing right you need to have all of this you know phases uh, well planned out and preparing beforehand never hurts okay so follow these you know uh, well, you know these are the steps for uh, upgrading from ecc to s4 hana so finally if you like this video uh, i would appreciate it if you could share a like and share this uh, video uh, in any of your social media linkedin uh, platform and uh, help subscribe uh, recommend this channel to your friends